hard times. Wow. So what hard time could I tell you about? Jesus. Oh man, you caught me on the spot. What really aided my strength? Oh. It's a long pause. But yeah, I just went back in the memory bank. <laughs> I found something for you. I found something. <laughs> I was born in Nairobi, in Kenya, and then um, my family and I lived after that in Tanzania, in Kyrgyzstan, Russia, France, Maldives, and Thailand. And I finally moved to England when I was a teenager. Yep, right into secondary school. The fun bit. <laughs> I think I've always struggled with believing in myself. In the past, I haven't done things because I've been held back by just not believing in myself. Because I used to take my value by comparing myself to other people and that, and that can be very dangerous in a way. So yeah, just kind of believing that um, in, in myself, um, you know, that I'm valuable. Uh, it wasn't like any hardcore drugs, just having an addictive personality. For me, it was just weed. I know there's a whole taboo around that, oh, you know, weed's not addictive and stuff like that, but for someone who needs an escape, I found that uh, it was a way just to, something to put my emotions into rather than deal with them. So for, for years, I was absolutely crippled by it, putting all my money into it and smoking way too much than I could afford type of thing. And yeah, I'm really happy I'm over it now. Totally clean, don't smoke it anymore, you know. Oh, hard times. Being away from the family. Yeah, that was hard. How I was away from the family. It wasn't through my choice, <laughs> but I was away from the family. Yeah, and that was hard, really hard. So how did it make me stronger? Now, all I do is hang around with the family. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you catch me now and I'm hanging around with the wife. Before I would have been hanging around with a friend or some crony. You know what I mean? But now, yeah, that hard time made me realize family's first. Yeah. Um, I did had a mental breakdown in December due to a mental health issues. <laughs> but then I managed to get better because of my mother helped me through it. I was born uh, in a very homophobic, homotransphobic and racist family, you know, the kind of um, family that sits on a table uh, and just in a so supposed assumed innocence, they say, no, I don't hate fags, <laughs> I, don't, I don't hate niggas, you know, they, they betray themselves uh, in one sentence only. I didn't want to end up like that. I want to, whenever I die, I want to die with a smile on my face. You know, with the conviction and the certainty that I have lived fully, you know, like dancing, full of colors, uh, among other people that feel like me, that there's no shame of being who you are. There's never been. Of advice to your younger self. Brilliant. What would you say? <sighs> if I could really grab myself by the scruff of the neck, I'd tell myself to slow down and appreciate life. You know what I mean? Don't go chasing after the glitz and the glam. And that's it. For me, I had an alcoholic father. And he was he was pretty abusive about it. Like he wasn't like just a drunk. Like he was he was bad. So I was putting my emotions of dealing with him into the way that he's done this. So I'll smoke. So in terms of dealing with it, you just have to stop being a 
feeling sorry for yourself and uh, actually deal with your emotions and be real with them. If you're feeling sad, be sad, you know, don't bottle it up. If you're gonna, if you're happy, be fucking happy, you know. You don't need to smoke to enjoy yourself. Like, you know, if you're going to a fucking water park or for the day out, mate, go and enjoy the water park. You don't need to get high to go to the fucking water park, do you know what I mean? When I was a little bit older, living in places like the Maldives, um, there was, a, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Everybody knows it as the, this paradise, uh, these paradise islands where people go on honey, honeymoon and, you know, the seas are turquoise and the beaches are white. But living there in the capital city um, is quite a bizarre experience as someone f um, who doesn't come from there just because it feels very alienating and... Like, we couldn't go to school because um, you have to be able to, you have to be Muslim and speak Divehi, the language that they speak there. So my mum started her own little school and there were 13 of us at most. Um, but yeah, lots of feeling of walking around the streets feeling quite different and alienated and a bit stared at. And yeah, I don't know, being very tall as well. I'm five, ten and a half. Um, I remember feeling very like, yeah, exposed and just sort of wanting to disappear a lot of the time and be, you know. I was a kid, I was abused narcissistically, uh, I was trained to be a mirror of my own homophobic and racist parents, so um, as a kid you hear all of that and you think that that is the right way to live. You grow up like that and you think that in order to survive and to be happy is to please people, is nurture emotionally other people and you forget about yourself, then when you realize that you look inward, you look inside yourself and you ask yourself, what am I? And the path starts there. Just start loving a lot more. There's so much hate, animosity, corruption, Let's start adding some more love to the equation. Bruv, this guy just came up to me and you know what? I actually like him. You know what I mean? It's not, it's close to love. <laughs> I don't love you yet. <laughs> but I actually like him. He came and he just like added some to my day. So yeah, you never know. The person you're walking down beside, you no, know, sitting down beside, just, you know what I mean? Give them a smile or something. You know? Just share some more love and the world would be better. That's it. Cut. <laughs> Seb, you're your winner. White House. Are you related to Amy? <laughs> I'll take you rehab right now. <laughs> I'm going to go add you right now on Insta. Add Seb right now. <laughs> you're a gentleman, man.